G'day folks. Thought I'd give you a bit of a look at how I plumb this new grow bed into the aquaponics system. Um, it's a bit of a how-to, but only in as much as it's how I do it. There are so many different ways you can plumb up grow beds to aquaponic systems and different um, style of grow beds. I mean, you've got your constant flow beds where you've got water in there the whole time. This one here is a flood and drain, and in the flood and drain family, you've got a few different options. You've got timed pumps that allow the uh, beds to flood and then drain through a small hole in your standpipe. I mean, you've got the bell siphon like we use. I've seen a tea siphon getting around, also loop siphons, all manner of different ways you can plumb these guys up. So I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, I've done it on four or five other beds and I'm pretty happy with the way they go. I think I've pretty much all got the idea down pat. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a run through that and just show you, you know, how I process the rock to go in here and a few of the things that happen along the way. Um, so let's get cracking. So there you go folks, that's where the grow bed's being set up, just in front of those two filters and the first sump tank. Down the base we have a stand made up of reclaimed gal pipe. Um, my father came out, brought his tools, wouldn't let me play uh, and welded up the stand. Uh, for those people concerned, you know, my father's got a resume that reads like a small novel, he's an engineer, he knows what he's doing and the risks involved when it comes to welding gal, so had a few concerns raised when I posted pictures in other places. The grow bed itself is made out of the side of an IBC, uh, the cage as well, so I'm not going to go through that here. If you want to check that out, I've got a bit of a um, look at how I've cut up the two previous beds on an earlier clip. Just don't want this clip to end up being an um, epic. So the stand's been levelled, I will almost level. What I've got is a situation where everything is draining off into that corner over there because that is where the bell siphon will be set up. So there's only a very, very slight lean down towards that corner. Uh, I've also wired on the cage onto the stand itself. I've just drilled some holes in the corner and wrapped some wire around either side of the pipe on the corner just so to keep it nice and steady I don't want anyone you know running in here and stopping themselves on it and yeah pushing the whole bed off that could be a bit of a catastrophe so I've just done that as a bit of a safety precaution the weight should hold it on there but you can never be too careful and now all I pretty much will have to do is drop the skin in and drill the hole over in the corner for the drain to go back into the sump tank. So one thing to consider when putting in these bulk head fittings is you need enough room to be able to turn the nut underneath. Um, not really a problem on a purpose-built tank or grow bed I should say, but with these IBCs, because they've got the metal ribbing that is actually supporting the base of it, you need to be able to position it in such a way where you can actually turn the nut and lock it onto the um, pipework all right. I've pretty much well positioned it, just put a mark in the centre there and I can drop the hole saw right through there now. The trick with these hole saws when working with plastic is to start the drill off in forward and then once the, the teeth of the saw itself hit the plastic, reverse the speed and you'll get a nice cleaner cut that way and you also don't run the risk of the teeth cutting in and ripping and distorting the hole. There we go, we've got a nice clean hole there. Now all I need to do is Give it a bit of a clean up just with a knife, just get any of those um, the ridges off it there. It'll just help the washer sit nice and flat on there and give you a better seal. So I'll go from the top first, just spin it around. Actually I might take my blade out. So that's nice and flat or relatively flat. So there we go, I think that's pretty much all clean enough. Now the shroud itself was pretty easy to make. Uh, all I've done is drilled a couple of holes on either end of a line and then I've got the jigsaw and just cut out these little holes. Um, I tried using the drop saw, it wasn't safe enough I thought so I decided to use another method. If I had a table saw it'd probably work a lot better. Down the bottom here I've drilled out a, a, another series of holes. These guys are just to let as much water from as far down in the bed as possible drain at once. And around the side here I've drawn a couple of um, lines just so that all these holes will meet up once I put this end cap in. These end caps, I really do like to have them underneath the bulkhead fittings now, mainly because they stop people from lifting out your, um, your screen, your guard here. Um, in the first barrel ponic system we made, um, my daughter came along, grabbed the top, wasn't her fault, she tried to pull the top off lifted the guard as well. So we ended up with gravel, oh sorry, clay going all down through there into the fish tank. You know, it's a real mess to try and clean up. So I figure, you know, for a couple of extra bucks, uh, throwing one of these Zen caps on can't hurt and these holes will help it drain all the way to the base anyway. So on the bulkhead fitting assembly, I'm actually using two washers. I'm going to put a rubber washer there underneath the shroud and then put the bulkhead fitting through. And then on the underside, pop on another washer and screw him on 
And there we go, that's pretty much all sorted. Now the next part of the bell siphon is just this little fitting here. Uh, no tape needed, it just screws in there. And that will take the 20 mil standpipe that I'll be popping in here. Now for the guard, just have to match up the marks I put on the side here. Where are we? There we go. All those holes down the base there now meet up nicely. Now just on the top I'm going to put one of these modified end caps, just another 100 mil end cap that's like what's on the base. I've just cut some bits out of the side there. Um, it just makes them sit a little bit looser, enough to stop critters and rocks and all sorts of bits and pieces getting in there, but easy enough just to pull off, you know, one-handed. So this is the blue metal, or the crushed basalt, that we'll be filling the bottom half of the grow bed with. Uh, I won't be filling the whole bed with this. On the top layer, I'll be still using the clay. It's a little bit easier on the hands, and you know, I want to encourage the girls to get their hands into the system as much as they can. When you're selecting rock for your system, it is a good idea to know why, where that rock comes from and what sort of rock it is. I've seen guys use um, rock mixers that contain limestone, and what happens is it just throws your whole water chemistry out. Your pH it goes up through the roof, locks nutrients out to your plants, and not a very good thing at all. Uh, the reason that is, is because there's limestone in the rock mix, and because the water in an aquaponic system tends to become acid over time, that water then acts on the limestone, um, releases carbonates, and it shoots your pH up. So it is a good idea to know what rock's going in there and to have no limestone whatsoever. Now the best way to make sure the rock you've selected is safe to use is to take a little jar or container and a bottle of vinegar along to your landscape support um, ask them nicely if you can do a couple of tests. I went out into the lot and I took a sample of this stuff here, popped it in my little jar, cover it over with the vinegar and I, there was no bubbles released, no carbon dioxide. So this stuff is definitely inert and safe to use as a grow bed media. Also went and um, tested the river rock. Um, I was thinking about using river rock in the system. It was inert, there was no bubbling whatsoever. It would have been all right to use, but just, you know, price-wise, this stuff works out a little bit cheaper, so I pretty much well decided to stick with this. So this stuff here is gonna get a bit of a wash before it goes into the grow beds. As you can see on my hands, it's a little bit dusty, and I definitely don't want those fine particles, you know, floating around the system. Also, too, I don't know what other contaminants has picked up along the way um, in from the mine on this journey to the landscape supplier or while it's been sitting there. So I think it's just a good idea to give it a bit of a hose out. So to wash this stuff out I just put it in a compost screen on top of a bit of um, shade cloth and just hit it with the hose. So there you go that's what the water looks like after washing out all the rock. A lot of dust in there and not something I'd want to be adding into a system that already has fish in it. Could cause a few health problems. But if you don't have compost screens a good idea would be just to you know lay down some shade cloth on your lawn, give it a bit of a hose and yeah just make sure you get rid of all the dust and any other crud that's in there that might affect your fish. I've used the large gauge mesh compost screen and I've got a lot of the small rocks out and I'm just using these larger ones and that's what I've just been packing around the, um, the standpipe itself. It'll just stop any of those smaller rocks getting in there and causing a potential blockage of any sort. So I'm just giving the rock one final rinse in situ and that wastewater will go out to fill up a wicking bed and then we can start on the clay and hopefully the bed will be done by this afternoon. Just washing off the clay, pretty much well in the same fashion. Um, as you can see, very dusty stuff, a lot of fine clay particles, so I'm going to give that a spray, get as much off as I can. So. so it's about 5.30, I've put the clay in, there's roughly around about three and a half bags. I'm just filling the bed once, just to level it off. Basically what's gonna happen is the water, I can see it coming through there. Um, the water comes up and you can move the clay around, get it nice and level and then hit the drain, let it take out all, any of the mucky water. I don't think it'll be that dusty and um, yeah, away we go. I'll be out first thing in the morning once we organise the girls and I'll finish it off. Um, the plumbing is the main thing that needs to be done now. So there you go folks, there's the bed all set up. Uh, the plumbing's been done, it was drizzling when I set that up so I didn't film it at the time, so we'll cover that in a minute. Just what it's planted out with, along the back I have three lots of honey pod peas, then in front of that, they're just a sugar snap pea, then in front of that I've got six wombok or Chinese cabbage, and five lots of beetroot along the front there. Now I'd also like to put in a bit of Okinawan spinach and maybe um, fill up a few gaps down the side with some more beetroot, we'll just wait and see. Uh, just along the back there you can see the cage that holds the grow bed I've wired on a bit of a trellis now that trellis goes all the way up 
to the top hat and is wired on the top there. And that's basically just for those sugar snap peas, give them something to climb on. Uh, it's actually on a bit of an angle, so I'll give you a bit of a different perspective on that. So the trellis, as you can see, is on a fair bit of an angle and there is a very good reason for that. The sun comes in on this angle, we're in winter down here at the moment, so all these veggies at the front are going to get the sun, but it also means that these sugar snap peas are going to try and grow towards the sun. So what I'm hoping will happen is they'll grow up through the mesh and then they'll lean over and fall on top of it. Um, they won't be cutting out any sunlight from the wombok and the beetroot and whatever else goes out the front there because the sun is coming in on that sort of an angle at the moment. In summer, it wouldn't be such a great idea because the sun travels pretty much all overhead and it would block out a lot of the light from those um, lower veggies. So I just thought I'd just show you that. It's just a bit of an idea I'm playing with. If it doesn't work, I'll take it down. Um, we'll just pop over now and I'll give you a look at uh, how the plumbing to the bed is all worked out from the pump. So just down here we have the pump. The pump is just at the end of that PVC pipe. This hose here goes out to the fish tank and the hose that comes out of the top of that fitting comes down to the master valve here through a nut and tail assembly down to the valve that takes the water out to the new grow bed. Um, I, I may be adding more grow beds onto there, so I thought a master valve there would come in handy. Um, this is basically a barb fitting, uh, barb T-piece, two barbs there and a threaded in the centre, and that's where I've just um, connected this valve. This valve I picked up on a bargain discount um, bench at a plumbing supply store for a couple of bucks. Great bargain there. Uh, down here, just another nut and tail jobby. I find using these nut and tails here, and there's another one up here, I find them really good to use around the Place because it means I can just remove these hoses from the system um, after I turn off valves of course and I can work on it you know without too much hassle I don't have to cut pipe it does make life a lot easier anyway back to the system um, this hose here then runs down along the ground there I've drilled a hole in my small retaining wall there and the hose runs under the rock all the way to the other side of the grow bed and we'll pop over there and pick it up on the other side. So down here we have the hose emerging from under the rock. It's just running up here to a valve. I've got it zip tied onto the leg so it doesn't get knocked around. Uh, the bottom of the valve, uh, the hose is held on with a hose clamp because there's high pressure coming from the pump. Uh, on the top side I'm not worried about it, it's running low pressure. Uh, the valve itself is useful to isolate the bed from the system and also to, to regulate your flow into the bed. As you can see it's not on full bore here and that helps you adjust your flow rate for your bell siphon to get it to initiate and turn off properly. Then if you follow the hose all the way up, we have twin 90 degrees that just direct it down into the bed. Now the other part of plumbing on here is the bell siphon over in the corner. We'll duck around and have a bit of a look. Just over here at the bell siphon end of business, we have an end cap just over our 100 mil shroud or four inch shroud. Just cut out a bit of the sidewall like I might have mentioned before. The bell itself is made out of 65 mil pipe and has an overall length of uh, about 240 millimetres. The standpipe inside here has an overall height of 190 millimetres, if I can get it out, from the very base of the grow bed and is made up of 20 mil pipe that runs into a 1 inch to 20 mil, or sorry, a 1 inch to 3 quarter inch, 25 mil to um, 20 mil reducer there. And that's just based on the Afnan's design of having a, a wide mouth for a lot of water to fall through into a narrower pipe just to initiate the siphon a lot faster. So I'm just popping back in there. So I'm pretty happy with the 50 mil gap between the top of that standpipe and the top of this um, this bell here. It's 50 mil, two inches. Um, I've had no problems with the siphon initiating at all. I'm really happy with that arrangement. Um, most of our siphons are made up fairly sil similar to that now, so they all work fine. Just to give you a bit of a look at how the drain is configured, I'm using recycled parts here. Um, some of these parts I've used on two or three different builds. So what I like to do is I like to push the fittings together, a little bit of the white Teflon plumbing tape wrapped around the end, and then I zap a 316 stainless steel screw through. It just means that, you know, when I rebuild beds or change my mind on designs, I can zap these out and I've got workable parts again. If I glued all this together, uh, it would be, you know, a bit of a pain in the butt to unglue them all using a heat gun and you don't always get a good seal on the um, the joints afterwards or once you've reclaimed them that way. So what I basically have is a screw thread that goes onto the bulkhead fitting up the top there and I've got a little 25mm or 1 inch o-ring that just sits in between the two gives a nice watertight seal. Um, then a bit of pipe pushed in there, Teflon tape and a 316 screw is zapped around this backside. Um, on this uh, fitting here same thing, Teflon tape around the pipe, screw on the back 
down here, same thing, screw down there, 316 screw. So it just means I can reclaim the parts like I mentioned. Um, other people, you know, glue, glue away to your heart's content. This is just the way I do it. The other fitting I could have used on here is this little threaded elbow. I could have um, spun that down up onto the thread there and had the pipe coming through. I think the only problem is the tail on this bulkhead fitting is so short, the, it would have had to um, yeah, remove some of this pipe with an oxy cutter or something like that. So just a lot easier to run it this way. They're all parts I had on hand, so I didn't have to run out and buy anything. So that's just the drain assembly. And from there, it just runs down straight into the sump tank and away she goes. Um, I timed this the other day and it took roughly about a minute for the water to start flowing full force out of the end of that pipe there and it took about um, two and a quarter minutes for the whole bed to drain so I'm pretty chuffed with that. Just a couple of quick points. When adding a new media bed, please take into account the amount of water needed to fill this uh, grow bed because if your sump tank isn't large enough, you will run it dry. Um, the last thing you want to do, run your sump tank dry, burn your pump out, water stops flowing and you kill your fish. So I know I've got more than enough water in my sump tank to be able to run all four grow beds full of water at one point in time. I won't give you numbers and figures because everyone's system's different and I don't want someone to copy my numbers and end up stuffing up because there's a slight variation in their system. Also too, another thing to take into consideration is you will be splitting your flow from your pump once more. That's if you're running your flow from the pump. If you're running it from the fish tank, well then there's no great big drama. But um, I've got more than enough water flowing into my two fish tanks. There's one there and there's another one over there. I've got more than enough water flowing into them to replace the volume over 1.5 times an hour so I know there's more than 1500 litres an hour running into both grow, uh, fish tanks there and the rest of the water is split between this grow bed here and the other four grow beds and a couple of barrels I have in the system so I just wanted to point that out um, better it gets pointed out now than you end up with um, a disaster down the track running your some tank dry and yeah running into all sorts of problems so there you go folks there's a bit of a look at how I plumbed these beds in they're all pretty much all done the same the same bell siphon and the same sort of pipe work used on them. Um, I hope that's helped guys who are a little bit curious about how to plumb a bed into a system. This is just the way I do it. Um, search around um, YouTube, forums, websites for uh, different methods of doing it and you might find something that suits you a lot better. This is just the way that I do it. Uh, if also too, the, the rock and the clay, I know someone's going to ask. We've got some clay put aside under the house for another build and I've pinched a bit from that. A bit of it's left over from this one. Um, you don't need to use the clay it can get expensive if you don't have the money put aside from it I'm a pretty frugal bloke so I don't have many vices so I don't mind springing for the clay that's why I'm using it but the rock if I had my time over again and yeah I didn't have the money I'd just go for that black uh, black that blue metal that's all you really need um, other than that, what else? Also, Andy. Andy's staying out with Hamish Gale and Nicole from Naughty Goat Farm here on YouTube. So Andy came along and I got to meet him and have a great yarn. So great to meet you, Andy, and I hope you enjoyed looking at the system. Um, came all the way from Singapore to visit. So anyway, I will pretty much will leave it there. Uh, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Um, if you want to check out uh, the history of this system and a couple of the little builds that have gone into it, um, check out the little uh, playlist up there on just the vlogs and that'll take you to a bit of a back catalogue and you can suss it out. Um, other than that, thank you all for coming along. I uh, hope everyone's well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. And look who's come to help me clean some rocks. G'day Hamish. Not gonna happen. Mate. Not gonna happen.